Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode on anubhavtrainings.com. In this episode, we will look at the scenario where we will find out what is the good practice to work with multiple OData services when they need to be consumed in your Fury application. Let's imagine a scenario that in your company there are multiple teams doing different variety of development and there are different different services which they have built by far in the S4 HANA system. And now you've been asked to develop an application which consumes these multiple services together in a Fiori app. This becomes a challenging task. You become confused that how can you add multiple OData services as part of Fiori app? And what is the good practice to make sure that you have a future safe and less maintenance in the code which you write. So let's take a scenario here. What I will have is I will have two different services as part of my application. So the team one here is building one OData service. Let me call this as Z Anubhav underscore Anubhav one underscore SRV. This is my first service. On the other side, I have a team two who's actually creating another OData service called Z Anubhav 2 SRV. Now these two OData services are created and exposed out. And now you as a developer would like to consume these services coming from these different teams. So this is you as a developer and you've been asked to build a Fiori application. And this Fiori app needs to now use both of these services as part of your Fiori application and both of them you want to add them as part of Fiori. So basically your Fiori app should call both of these services. How do you achieve that? Let's see and what could be a good practice in future to make sure that your code is future ready and safe. So let's get started in the SAP system. I'll go to my S4 system and I go to services. I've already created these two services for you. So let me just go here to my S4 system and filter the external service with Z Anubhav and you would found that I've got two services already over here. I'll just call the browser to look at the service metadata document for both the services. So this is my service one exposing product data and then I have another service Z Anubhav SRV2 which is exposing business partners data. You can see supplier data. So both of them exposing different different data set. Okay. So it's time to go to our web IDE and create a Fiori application using these two OData services. So as we have two OData services, we would need two OData models. And as you all know that we cannot have two data models with same name in parallel. So one of the OData model will be the default model without a name and another one will be a named model with some name. So I'm going to go back to web IDE and let's create a new UI5 project out here. So I say new project from template. Let's create a very basic one and now what we will do is just go ahead and create a UI5 project. So just come back here and I will choose UI5 application. Say next. Let's give some name Z O data consumption. Consume O data services. Oh, it's a namespace. Yeah, so let's put ADS dot o data and I'm going to say next and we're going to choose just one view called main XML view say finish. So this is how we just quickly add up one o data project and now in this we will include our o data services very easy one I'm going to right click on this and say new uh, we will just be adding the o data pro o data service so let's go to the manifest.json descriptor editor will open and here we will go ahead and create data sources. So let's add two of these data sources which we just created. The first one was our um, our server, uh, our service for Z Anubhav 1. I'm going to search that Anubhav 1 and just add this up and let's finish. So that's the first data source. Let's add another one. Again choose our S4 HANA server where we have the data source and just choose the second one. 
both of them is selected but now it's time to create the odata model for both of them remember these are two data sources hence we will need to have two odata models for example if you have five odata services different different services which you want to consume in in your project then you will have five different models with different names so let's create a plus i'm going to create the first one as a default one and choose my service as anuba one say okay and then the next one i will have to give some name i say odata two and just choose it as second one say okay so now we've got two odata models in there don't forget to save your manifest and it's time to just quickly execute this empty view so let's run this and just keep an eye on f12 observe the network call is it making a call to both of the odata service uh, by loading the metadata of both of them so let's quickly go ahead and check that and then in next subsequent section i will be just quickly creating um, a real uh, list control to display the data from both of these odata services the first one is the uh, product data and the second one will be the the supplier data which we will be adding so now i just execute and i'll just once again check the network tab and just quickly do a refresh and you would see now in the second our metadata calls you see here first metadata and second one for both of the odata services which we have so you see first metadata call and then this one is the second metadata call fine so now it's time to quickly create the list control to display both the data both supplier and product data i'm going to go back to the view and now here in the view we will add two list controls just make it a little bigger for you to check the first list control is uh, item segregation and i'm going to bind it with the default data model uh, with slash product set entity set and then let's add item and then let's add here a display list item with the text value and label and now i will also duplicate this one for supplier set but the supplier set as you know as part of our manifest you can check here we have got two odata models created the first one is the default one without a name and the second one is odata 2. let's pick it up and put here the supplier set yeah so that's a named model binding and now also quickly go ahead and check the properties just check the metadata here for the first service what it takes it takes product id product category name so i'll just choose category name and just go back product id category product id and name just put that and let's look at the metadata for the second service to see what it has got and now you can see here we have got bpid and maybe i'm going to use company name so just do that binding for the second one it's a named model so must have to use the name of the model every time and company name. just save this up let's uh, come back to the fury application and refresh and as a result of that two list controls will uh, will will get the data so you can see the first list control have got you the product data and just scroll down a little bit more you would see also the supplier data coming you see this different supplier information yeah so both of these lists lists are getting the data it looks like a straightforward one maybe I just uh, do one thing quickly add them inside a panel so I'm gonna add a panel here and then inside the panel one we will be adding the list one and then inside the panel two I will add the list two makes it easy for me to show you the visualization now let's give the title for the panels I hope that's not the title property here okay so I'm just going to check what's the correct property I guess it's a, a label property 
nope I'm gonna go back then maybe quickly check this I'll just keep it panels empty panels and I'm going back and refresh so now let's see what do we get we will get ideally two panels oops is still the panel title is not there so that's the reason now we're not getting expand option so maybe it's uh, done via aggregation I hope so so let me just add header toolbar and then under that a toolbar object and under that a title object with text property and I say this is my products data similarly we will add also the another one for the second panel as suppliers and let's come back and refresh the page so now let's see what do we get yes we are getting our panels so this products data as you can see if I just scroll down a little bit uh, once my products are complete you can see now the suppliers that's good not a problem you are able to call two O data services and then um, it's easy to just bring the data also by connecting to the ECC or SO system but the challenge comes is in future let's say you are getting more O data services maybe five six seven and so on the number of models which you are creating here are going to increase okay these number of models are going to increase slowly and then the way number of uh, models will increase here your complexity in the code will also increase because this named model is is actually uh, always going to uh, going to be used with its name as you can see here in supplier binding we are always doing that and as a developer I would probably get confused at some point of time that which is the correct model I'm referring and it becomes really cumbersome when the number of services are increasing so how and what do we do to make it you know easy make it more more like a standard so the guideline of of SAP Fury best practice says that we should always use one O data service in one project okay that's the guideline but now here the requirement is says that you got to use maybe two or more than two services so now the guideline and requirement both are far away how do we bring them to a common place to do that now what we will do is go back and do a little trick in the above system so I'm going to go back and create another audit project which is a wrapper on the existing project so I have two projects Z and over one and two I'm going to create a wrapper project by combining them for my project so watch out here I'm going to say create and let's give some name Z Anubhav and I'm gonna say this is a wrapper project for sub O data and this wrapper is the central point of contact it's the facade layer to which we will be calling from the UI I'm gonna say local object for time being back and now create right click on this model and say include O data service here choose that and now you can see you can give a service name yeah so the one which we want is the Anubhav star F4 help and you would see the list of all the services with Z Anubhav I can see two so I'm going to use one of them one by one this is the first one I say okay and now you can see it is model referenced here the second one also the same way right click and say um, include audit a service and let's choose the second one here so I'm just going to choose Z and above 2 SRV and of course that version is 1 and I say OK now both the models are referenced here means this is a wrapper which now includes everything from the sub services this is a reference so it's it, it's equal to something like in, in object oriented world what we do is multiple inheritance for example there's a class A there's a class B and there's a class C and I want to create a new class say uh, D now this D class inherits everything from A B and C so it's similar to that so even you want to change the A B and C you can go ahead and freely change them immediately that change will reflect in the D because it's just inheriting referencing the objects it's not creating a new one altogether so and now for the UI also the problem is solved because UI will talk to only Z Anubhav I'm going to generate and say okay local objects we are done 
and it's time to register this OData service before we go for final consumption. So we go to uh, the transaction for register and slash name service. And now we will be registering our new service Z Anubhav. Let's do that. And let's find this. Awesome. And now watch out after registration. If you check out quickly the metadata of this particular service, you would observe it's now combining everything together as a composite service. So this will behave like a, a as a one service from the consumer point of view, the Fury point of view, it is one service, but behind the scene it's talking services offered by different teams so you can just create this wrapper for yourself uh, and and let the let those teams wonder about what you have done and you have just created another service which is just reusing everything from there just show you the the service document here you would see now it contains combined entity sets from both of the child services yeah you see suppliers and products so now the easiest part is just use the new service. So I'm going to go back, look at the Fury code. Now it simplifies to a great extent. I'm going to come back and I will go back to descriptor editor to models and I'll remove this model. I don't need it anymore. Just choose and just simply remove it. Bye bye. Go to data source, remove both the data sources. Not needed. Bye bye. Remove this default model also. Bye bye for timing. And now I just add another data source and this is going to be my default model and just choose the server once again our s4 rana instance so uh, find the service which you created the wrapper one and say finish and you can see it's been added let's go to the models and quickly create a default model now for this newly created data source say okay and don't forget to save time to go back to the view and in the view now bye bye to all this extra named model binding because everything becomes now simplified to a single default model. Bye bye everything. Just save this. This is the right way, the best practice. We following now the best practice at the same time we're using multiple services. This is a, one of the real amazing example of achieving a good integration from Fury up to the OData service. And voila, there you go. You can see we got products data as usual like earlier. And we also got supplier data so you have got one single model your your code has been simplified uh, the users will not complain or you also never get confused your code developers never get confused about which data is uh, retrieved from which service that way it's always very very handy for you to work with the with the OData services and you also created a wrapper so with that it's a wrap on today's class hope you enjoyed this video how to consume multiple old data service this is real practical knowledge which comes out of the box from real learning with that anubhav signing out thank you so much and goodbye